Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Barbara Fuller. As chair of the board, I welcome you to this virtual December 7th, 2021 regular meeting of the Washtenaw County Board of Road Commissioners. Our communications manager, Emily Kaiser, will now describe how our virtual meetings operate, how to access the agenda packet, and how people may participate remotely. Emily. Thanks, Commissioner. So if you would like to make public comment during the public comment portion, I'm um, sorry, there's two different public comment portions in this meeting today. So if you'd like to make public comment during the budget public hearing or the public comment portion of the meeting, we will provide instructions and prompt you at the appropriate time in the agenda to virtually raise your hand. This could be done through your computer or through your touch tone phone. The chat feature on the Zoom meeting is available only as technical support for users on their computer or smartphone. If you're experiencing technical issues with audio or video during the meeting, please submit a comment in the chat and I will help you troubleshoot. If you're a member of the staff or a road commissioner and experiencing technical issues, we ask that you contact the IT help desk during the meeting and they can help you. The audio and video of this meeting is being recorded. A link to the video will be posted to wcroads.org in the next day or two. Today's meeting agenda is also posted on wcroads.org and there's a link available in the chat if you're joining us from your computer. Thanks, Commissioner. Thank you, Emily. I now call this meeting to order and ask if Aaron would please call the roll. And commissioners, let me remind you, you need to identify your location for this virtual meeting. Erin. Chair Barb Fuller. Present, participating remotely from Sio Township, Washtenaw County, Michigan. Vice Chair Rod Green. Good afternoon, I'm participating remotely from Sio Township, Washtenaw County, Michigan. Commissioner Doug Fuller. Present and participating remotely from Sio Township, Michigan. Um, Commissioner Gloria Yamas has an excused absence today. Um, so Commissioner Joanne McCullum. Present, <coughs> participating remotely from Ypsilanti Township, Washtenaw County. Managing Director, Cheryl Siddle. Present. Director of Finance and IT, Dan Ackerman. Here. Director of Operations, Jim Harmon. Present and Director of Engineering and County Highway Engineer, Matt McDonnell. Present. Thank you, Erin. Um, at this time, I ask that we observe a moment of silence in, in homage to the National Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day to remember and honor the 2,403 Americans who were killed in the Japanese surprise attack on Pearl Harbor in Hawaii on this day in 1941. Thank you. Next item is approval of our agenda. May I have a motion to approve the agenda as presented, please? Madam Chair, I motion that we approve the agenda for December 7th. I support. Thank you. Any changes, deletions, additions? Hearing none, Aaron, if you would please call the roll. Commissioner Rod Green. Yes. Commissioner Doug Fuller? Aye. Commissioner Joanne McCollum? Yes. And Commissioner Barb Fuller? Yes. Next item on our agenda is a public hearing and I now open the public hearing for the proposed 2022 Washtenaw County Road Commission budget. Emily, if you would please explain once again how people may be recognized to offer public comment on the proposed 2022 budget. Thank you, Commissioner. So if you would like to make comment again on the 2022 budget uh, during this public hearing portion, we ask that you virtually raise your hand now. If you're viewing the meeting on your computer, you wanna first make sure to click join audio, and then you can raise your hand by clicking the participants or reactions button at the bottom of your screen, and then the raised hand button or raise hand button. If you dialed into the meeting from your touch tone phone, you can raise your hand by dialing star nine. I will unmute participants with raised hands one at a time. I will announce your username or the last four digits of your phone number when it is your turn to speak. Please share your name and address before beginning your comments. Thank you, Emily. Are there any hands raised at this time to comment on the proposed 2022 Washtenaw County Road Commission budget? At this time, Commissioner, there are no raised hands. 
Thank you. <laughs> I will now close the public hearing for the proposed 2022 Washtenaw County Road Commission budget. The next item on our agenda is, is acceptance of minutes. We have three sets for consideration today. May I have a motion to accept the board meeting minutes of November 16th, 2021, appearing on pages three through 12 of our packet. Madam Chair, I move acceptance of the board meeting minutes of November 16th, 2021 as presented. Support. Thank you. Additions, deletions, corrections to the November 16th board meeting minutes. Seeing none, Aaron, if you would please call the roll. Commissioner Doug Fuller? Aye. Commissioner Joanne McCollum? Yes. Commissioner Rod Green? Yes. And Commissioner Barr Fuller? Yes. Next, may I have a motion to accept the closed session minutes of November 16th, 2021. Please note that these were sent separately to the members of the board. May I have a motion? Madam Chair, I motion that we Accept the closed session min minutes of November 16th, 2021. I support. Thank you. Any additions, deletions, corrections? Seeing none, Aaron, if you would please call the roll. Commissioner Joanne McCollum? Yes. Commissioner Rod Green? Yes. Commissioner Doug Fuller? Aye. And Commissioner Bart Fuller? Yes. <laughs> Last set of minutes, may I have a motion to accept the working session minutes of November 16th, 2021 as presented. They appear on pages 13 through 15 of the packet. Uh, Madam Chair, I move acceptance of the working session minutes of November 16th of 2021 as presented. Support. Thank you. Discussion, additions, deletions, corrections. Seeing none, Aaron, if you would please call the roll. Commissioner Joanne McCollum? Yes. Commissioner Doug Fuller? Aye. Commissioner Rod Green? Yes. And Commissioner Barr Fuller? Yes. Next item is public comment. This is the time set aside on the agenda to receive comments from the public. This is not intended to be a period for dialogue. Each person will be allotted three minutes to address the board. Emily? Has anyone raised their hand to be recognized for public comment? At this time, Commissioner, there are no raised hands. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is written communications appearing on pages 17 through 46 of the packet. Commissioners, anyone have any comments, anything you want to draw out to our attention? Hearing none, we will move on. Next item on the agenda is um, the consent agenda. It appears on pages 47 through 123. May I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented, items one through six. Madam Not Chair, sure. I motion that we accept the consent agenda from pages uh, one through six. Items one through six. Items one through six, I'm sorry. It's okay, it's okay. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. Discussion, anything you want to point out? All right, Aaron, if you would call the roll, please. Commissioner Rod Green. Oh, I think you- Yes. <laughs> Commissioner yes. Joanne McCullum. Yes. Commissioner Doug Fuller? Aye. And Commissioner Bart Fuller? Yes. Next on our agenda, we have three action items. May I have a motion to approve the 2022 board meeting schedule, which appears on pages 90 and 91 of our packet? Uh, Madam Chair, I move that the board adopts the 2022 board meeting schedule attached here too. We made a part of these minutes which will take place on the first and third Tuesday of each month at 1 p.m. A second, Support. Thank you. Moved and seconded. Any observations, anything you need to point out, anyone on this calendar that needs to be addressed for an adjustment? 
Hearing none. Aaron, if you would please call the roll. Commissioner Joanne McCollum? Yes. Commissioner Rod Green? Yes. Commissioner Doug Fuller? Aye. And Commissioner Barb Fuller? Yes. Next item on the agenda is the 2022 working session schedule. May I have a motion to approve it as presented, appearing on pages 92 and 93 of the packet? Madam Chair, I motion that we accept the 2022 working session schedule, and that is from pages 92 to 93. Thank you. Any discussion? I support. Very good. Thank you. There's nothing further. Aaron, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Rod Green? Yes. Commissioner Joanne McCollum? Yes. Commissioner Doug Fuller? Aye. And Commissioner Barb Fuller? Yes. Next item on the agenda are reports. I don't see either of our county commissioners, right? We have another, we have one another item. item, Your Honor. We I'm got sorry, another action know. item. Oh. <laughs> sorry, Dan. <laughs> All Almost right. Give me a heart attack there, Barb. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you for pointing that out, everybody. Uh, may I have a motion to approve the Road Commission's 2022 annual budget as presented, appearing on pages 94 through 123 of our packet? So moved. Thank you. Support. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for keeping me in line, people. Any discussion on this? Hearing none, Aaron, if you would please call the roll. Commissioner Doug Fuller? Aye. Commissioner Rod Green? Yes. Commissioner Joanne McCollum? Yes. And Commissioner Barb Fuller? Yes. <laughs> All right, now we move on to reports. Um, are either of our county commission liaisons with us today? Not I'm today, Commissioner. All right, thank you. Uh, we will move right along to the road commissioner reports in that case. Commissioner Doug Fuller. Commissioner Doug Fuller would only like to report that I will be attending the A meeting, normally scheduled meeting of the McChrisip board tomorrow in beautiful Mount Pleasant. So I will be unavailable here. Drive safely. Thank you. You're welcome. Commissioner McCollum. I have nothing to report. Thank you. Commissioner Rod Green. Uh, just that I attended the chat session this past uh, Wednesday, had a very fruitful discussion about how to petition uh, for a walkway along M17 Washington Avenue. And that was brought by a student at the University of Michigan. Very fruitful discussion. So where did they want the walkway, Commissioner? Anywhere. They just want to know who, who and how to petition. Ah, what the process okay. was. Okay. So we suggested that we contact, that they contact MDOT because they have control over all Michigan roadways. I mean, M17 anyway. Excellent. Thank yes. you. Um, I, I will only report um, that I received an email this morning from Kirk Profit, a, um, a lobbyist with GCSI in Lansing. And he pointed out that the, House, the State House of Representatives this afternoon is voting on whether to make county commissioner terms four years. Currently, they are two-year terms. And there's a bill in the House being considered today to extend that to four-year terms. So stay tuned. We'll find out more about that, I assume, by our next meeting. At this time, let's move on to the Managing Director and Staff Reports that appear on pages 124 through 138 of the packet. Cheryl. Sure. Um, thanks, Commissioner. Um, I would like to point out that it appears that Commissioner Schenk has just joined us. If you'd like to go back to the County Commissioner Reports. No. 
would indeed. Commis Commissioner Schink, you have the floor. Thank you. I don't really have, it's glad, I'm glad to be back. I don't really have anything exciting to add other than that we've had our last meeting for the year, we passed our budget. And um, so every all is well at the county, I guess you could say. Um, COVID numbers are going up and our public health department is working on it. I know you work closely with them and uh, just glad to be here. And yes, I know about that four year commissioner term vote today, we'll see what happens. So that's all, thank you so much. Sure, is there a companion bill in the Senate or do they just anticipate moving the house bill across the rotunda? I believe that it already passed the Senate. Oh, okay. A couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. All right. Could change things. I don't know how exactly, but definitely could change things. So it'll be interesting to know if current terms get extended by two years or whether in 2022, the term is then for four years instead of two. Do you have any insight on that? I believe it's the latter. Okay, so the effective date would would be in 2023? Yes, that's okay. my belief. I okay. don't know how things have changed. <laughs> one, one can only wonder, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Very good. Does anyone have any questions of our commissioner here with us today? And we have the cat in attendance as well. That's great. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Sue. It's good to see you. Happy holidays. Thank you. And thank you for your work. I appreciate it. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. Managing Director Siddle, the floor is yours. All right. Thank you. Um, as always, I'm happy to start with by answering any questions that anyone may have with respect to any of the reports that were included. I have right. a question. Oh, sure, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, on page 129, where it talks about after hour call ins, and if you want me to hold my question until Operations Director Harmon speaks, that would be okay. But I'm just, I mean, the debris in the roadway and all the deer carcasses, um, just curious what's, what's going on there and what we're doing, just for clarity. Sure. I mean, Jim, if you'd like to go ahead and answer that. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, received calls after hours from uh, our answering service, which is HVA, um, informing us is typically law enforcement or other emergency responders. Sometimes motorists uh, will call in and uh, report a dead deer carcass in the middle of the state trunk line highways or county roads, and then we'll have to dispatch uh, workforce to come in and remove those carcasses from the roadway, the travel portion of the road. The debris could be glass. It could be uh, literally, we've had instances of Christmas trees uh, coming loose from their moorings on the top of cars and, and in the middle of the highway and so on and so forth. So any number of sundry items ending up in our roads that uh, our workforce needs to come in and remove. So uh, eliminate the hazard for the traveling public. I know out in my area with these high winds, relatively high winds lately, there have been some some new trees that decided to pluck themselves down in the roadway. So That's uh, true. please thank the crews for taking care of those things outside of normal business hours. Thank you. Cheryl. Uh, Commissioner Fuller, it looks like Commissioner Green has his hand up. Thank you, just... Com Commissioner Green. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just a quick question for Jim. Uh, what's considered after hours? What time period? Our normal work period right now is five days a week, Monday through Friday from seven in the morning until 3.30 in the afternoon. So any time outside of that normal work day would be considered after hours. Commissioner. All right, thank you. You're welcome. And Jim, I don't know if you wanna share that we started our night patrol as well. We did. Uh, shortly after Thanksgiving, uh, we started our four person night patrol. They, uh, their regular work week is Sunday evening, beginning at 8, 8, 8 p.m. They work until 4.30 a.m. Monday morning, and they continue that until Friday morning. Uh, they are eligible for overtime. Uh, we do have the flexibility to call them in early, uh, keep them later after the end of their normal shift at 4.30 in the morning, 
And we certainly have done that uh, to good effect with winter maintenance uh, being slightly shorthanded at this time. And their responsibility is the state trunk line system. That is true. Uh, state trunk line, they will patrol those roadways and perform winter maintenance as necessary. Some non-winter maintenance, such as patching and removing deer carcasses, uh, could be an example, especially in the fall. And um, they also have some latitude to uh, be our eyes and ears on the county road system and inform the superintendent if additional uh, workforce is needed to attend to the county roads. Thank you, Jim. Any other oh. questions, commissioners? Cheryl. All right, um, so essentially I've got uh, two things to cover. One of them is um, we've had a lot of discussion about the Open Meetings Act. Um, and as we have previously discussed, um, and I have confirmed um, with our legal counsel, as well as um, having spoken with a county officials um, with respect to how they will to be uh, conducting their meetings, um, under the Open Meetings Act, our ability to meet virtually um, expires December 31st. So effective January 1, 2022, we are required to hold in-person meetings. So um, as we have previously discussed, um, on December 21st um, of this month, we will have a, a practice session uh, at the conclusion of our working session to go through exactly how that will work logistically uh, within our building. But that will require um, all commissioners to be present and to be sitting at the, the, the dais is where we will put you. Um, we will have limited interaction with staff um, at those meetings. We are working very hard right now to attempt to have a hybrid meeting. Um, uh, fingers crossed that we have the ability to continue virtual public participation because we do think that that um, has been beneficial. That has been uh, one of the, the, the positives that has come out of this entire pandemic situation. Um, and we would like to continue that option. Um, we have been working with a vendor for upgrades to the board meeting room in order to accomplish that. Um, as is so many things, there are supply chain issues with that equipment right now. So we don't believe that that will be in effect as of uh, January 1, but we're hoping it will be at some point shortly thereafter. So it is likely that we will have an interim um, uh, way of handling the meetings. Again, we're very much trying to, to make sure that we can have a hybrid meeting if possible. Worst case scenario is we will be in person as required and then um, be able to accommodate the public participation virtually once we finally have the equipment in place. But if possible, we're trying to make that um, that hybrid meeting work effective January 4th. Are there any questions about that, about what the requirements are for us to do that? All right, um, that's good. So as of December 21st, not to confuse anything, but we would ask that commissioners be physically in the building. Um, we will put you in um, separate conference rooms um, in order for the board meet, the working session and the board meetings themselves. But we will have that practice session um, in order for everyone to feel comfortable with how that's going to work. And that would be effective with our January 4th, 2022 board meeting. And commissioner and McCullum? Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. Yeah, uh, I guess I was thinking of it differently. I thought we were going to like sit out in the area, spaced out. We're... Effective January 4th, then all five commissioners will be in the boardroom, spaced out as far as possible. Myself, I will be in there, and then we will have either Aaron or Emily present. At least this is what we're, our current plan is, to be able to um, work the technology and to facilitate participation. Obviously, we're open to the public at that point, although the seating would be limited for the public in order to maintain social distancing at that time. Uh, we would have the directors, right now, the intent is to have the directors um, report from their offices, um, trying to have this hybrid meeting if possible, so that they could report from their offices. Um, and then if we ha hopefully have that ability, we would also have the public have the ability to participate virtually as well. That's fingers crossed where we'd like to be as of January 4th. Um, our fallback, if necessary, is that we would have all five commissioners present, and then it would be minimal staff that would be there, and then obviously, again, open to the public. And then whenever we have the ability to get the technology up and running in the boardroom at that point, we would ac accommodate remote 
participation by the public, only by the public. Okay, so on the 21st, we're going to be in individual rooms when we're there? Right. Okay. Yes. yes, we're trying to maintain social distancing as much as possible for as long as possible, actually. Yes, thank you. Commissioner Fuller? Cheryl, um, two things. One, I believe in a previous email, maybe last week, you sent room assignments mm -hmm. for the commissioners for the working session. So we'll still be off in separate rooms for the working session and then come together for the practice session, right? Correct, um, and then and back into the individual rooms for the board meeting. So we'll only be in the boardroom together for the practice session and then we'll disperse once, once again. Um, On December if, 21st. Right. Correct. Right. I I'm wondering, Commissioner Schenck, do you, can you shed any light on the possibility of the county declaring another state of emergency, which is why we've been able to meet virtually thus far this year? We don't have the power to do it because there was some enabling legislation that was passed and we, it hasn't been passed again and we don't anticipate it that it will. Okay, thank you. Or we would. And we've been informed of similar through our insurance pool as well. There is a Senate bill that's out there to extend the ability to meet remotely should there be a state of emergency through the end of March. Um, our understanding is there's been no movement on that bill. Any other questions with respect to um, our board meetings, either the practice session um, at the next meeting or what the intent is starting in January? All right. Um, and of course, feel free to give me a call um, if you've got any questions before that on that. Um, the other uh, a uh, topic that I was going to cover is that unfortunately, um, COVID seems to be catching up with us despite all of our best intentions um, with respect to protocols. So we expect that there'll be a communication that is sent out to all staff later today um, where we will be increasing our protocols. Some of the same things that we had been doing previously um, with respect to we'll be closing our conference rooms, um, we'll be closing our break rooms, we'll be asking our staff to report from personal vehicles directly to trucks. Um, so it is um, not anything that we wanted to do, but that we feel given where our numbers are at right now, that it is in the best interest of our organization and obviously continuity of service um, to be able to, um, to put those additional protocols in place. Are there any questions with respect to that? Carol, is the lobby going to be closed again then? No, we'll keep the lobby open. Um, at this point, frankly, we've seen minimal lobby traffic, mm -hmm. um, but, and, and we have um, the plexiglass that are in place for both the permits clerk and for, um, for Callie who is sitting at the front desk. So any interaction that they do have with the public, um, they're protected. Um, and we do of course have the mask requirement as well. But the in-person meetings, um, I really think that, I mean, we wouldn't be having anybody come in just to meet for meeting's sake at that point. Any other questions? All right. Um, well, Jim, we already picked your brain on a couple of different topics, but if you'd like, I'd be happy to hand it over to you. I know you guys have been busy. We have. Uh, board members, you'll find the operations department staff report for the three-week period of beginning on November 8th through November 28th on page, it starts on page 25, 125 of your packet and concludes on page 131. Very busy period, a lot of non-winter activity and some winter activity. During this period, we uh, provided winter maintenance on the public road system three separate times. Uh, in total, uh, we've responded a little over, I think, eight times, and we've expended almost 1,900 tons of salt. Um, we've certainly applied more than that in the past, and we've applied none by this period of time in the winter season. Um, we are a little bit above average uh, for this point in time, but we're well stockpiled. Uh, everything is operational. All of the crews have gotten acquainted with their routes and uh, 
we're ready for more winter weather when it decides to arrive, uh, notwithstanding the lake effect snow that streamed through here last night. So I'm happy to answer any questions that the board may have at this time. All right, Thank thanks, you. Dan. Thank you. Okay, Dan, uh, the man of the moment with all the budget, we've, other than the uh, little hiccup there, I think that we did well getting that through. <laughs> Well, I definitely appreciate the board's approval of the year-end 2021 budget as well as the 2022 budget. If you recall, we technically can't open our doors January 1 without that approval, so thank you. Um, I knew somebody was going to speak up. Certainly, I was planning on it, but uh, someone beat me to it. So, uh, you know, just to uh, appreciate the, the board support, and certainly we'll, we will be monitoring everything closely. Um, as we've discussed at our working session, we feel that um, the numbers for 21 and 22 represent close to a worst case scenario. So I fully expect to be in a better financial shape at the end of the year. Of course, we don't know what uh, mother nature will do, but um, you know, we, we can handle some of that too. So um, again, just appreciate your, your continued support. And as always, if you have any questions on the budget, feel free to reach out at any time. Um, with that, I'd like to draw your attention to the last page of the, the packet, page 138. And my apologies, the budget made the, uh, the, the board packet quite lengthy. Um, just want to talk about Michigan Transportation Funds. Um, so we received the October numbers, and they were actually down 6% in October of 21 compared to 20. And um, definitely not following the patterns, if there is a pattern, but usually the it's been um, higher than the previous year. Um, and Cheryl, I believe you shared the correspondence from the County Road Association. Um, before I even had an opportunity to reach out to MDOT to ask why the, the decrease, we received an email from a Shelby Eva from the County Road Association. Apparently they have uh, an agreement with MDOT if there are any significant uh, changes to the Michigan Transportation Fund that they would receive a communication. And um, as far as the October decrease, uh, they shared that ExxonMobil has an unpaid liability of $17.6 million. Not sure how that happens and who enforces that. But anyway, um, that contributed to the decrease. And so I was, I was glad to actually see something besides people are driving more or driving less. Um, and it sounds like that's going to be an ongoing communication from the County Road Association if there are any um, unusual adjustments that are being made either way. So I, I was glad to see that. And certainly that explains why there's, there's such a decrease um, in the October numbers. Um, so certainly Cheryl and I and staff talked about, do we need to make an, a further adjustment to Michigan Transportation Fund? But we felt pretty confident that at this time, our budget number should be good for year end 2021. So any, any questions or further discussion on that at all? Did the commissioner see that email, Cheryl? Do you know? Okay. No, I sent that to staff, but I can to certainly staff. forward it to commissioners if they would like to see it as well. Yeah. So that that's, um, you know, I think a needed communication. Michigan, the Michigan transportation funds are so important to all the road commissions. And I'm glad to see uh, the County Road Association is putting more of a priority on that to, to keep us in the loop, if you will. Um, besides that, with regards to the finance department, uh, can't believe it's year end, but um, definitely our, our busy time. So we're trying to process everything we can. Um, the finance department's been working with operations very, very closely to uh, finalize our, our final township billings. I think we're getting closer. Um, with that. So hopefully we can send those out soon and, and again, process any remaining invoices that we have as well as uh, paying vendors or anything related to 2021. Uh, the auditors reached out. They would actually like the audit to start on January 31st. So that is a very quick turnaround, um, but certainly we can handle it. And um, we've done this before. And, and certainly it's a team effort with the other departments, getting everything in and processed as well. And um, you know, the goal is, of course, is to be ready for that, and, and we will be. So, but it's a definitely a tight window. So that creates a lot of busyness for us in finance. And as far as IT, uh, just a couple of things. 
Uh, the, the software package we're using for FOIA requests, Marsh, um, everything is, is set up. And also we uh, were able to import some of our previous data. So that's, and I know it's already being uh, used. Uh, we've had some FOIA requests come in recently. So, um, but that seems to be working quite well. Um, and also as far as our team's phone system, we do have, we have defined a testing group for that. Um, and we held a meeting with, with the folks that will be testers. And um, so that, that process is in motion as well. Um, kind of like many things, we're waiting on some equipment, some headsets and so on to, um, to start the testing group uh, off and running. But um, hopefully that will be in by the end of the year, this year or early next year. Um, but you know, supply chain issues seem to be all around. So we'll, we'll hopefully get those in shortly and continue to move forward. And that's all I have, unless there's any more questions for me. Great, thank you. All right, thanks, Dan. And last but not least, Matt, if you wanna bring us up to speed on engineering. Sure, uh, I will point the board's attention in the budget, uh, in the board packet on pages 118 and 119 represents roughly just over $30 million in projects of investment in our infrastructure. We, we are putting that list on a map so we can kind of uh, get a picture of what all the work that's gonna get accomplished. So I'll be sending that out here after the board meeting so you can take a look at it. And then obviously we've got a lot of work to coordinate all the efforts necessary to accomplish that work. So Jim and I and others will be meeting um, to work on that, uh, but it looks like a banner year. So I'm very excited to prepare for that. And uh, our staff is working very hard to, in preparation for the, the coming year. Any questions? All right, okay. thanks Matt. I think that's it on behalf of staff, unless there's any further questions for any of us. Okay, uh, let's move right along. I want to note that on December 21st, we will have our last meeting of this calendar year, starting at 9 a.m. with a virtual working session, followed at by the practice session that we just talked about. And then at one o'clock, the virtual board meeting will convene. The chat sessions uh, that occur every Wednesday from noon to 1 p.m. tomorrow, Commissioner Yamas is on board for that. And on December 15th, Commissioner McCollum is scheduled to staff that. With no further business to come before the board, may I have a motion to adjourn? You may. Oh, I'm going to stop just because I see Caroline Sanders, our other county commissioner, has joined us. I'm going to take a point of personal privilege. Caroline, would you like to say hello or update us or both? <laughs> uh, hello to everybody. Uh, I don't know that I, I don't know if I have an update. I wasn't plan, planning to give one. Uh, we did... Um, I was looking to see if Sue was on here because I didn't want to cross over. Sue, yes. did you sh did you share the um, proposed time change for our meetings? You're on mute. Okay, she said no. Um, so we had a proposal at the uh, meeting on Wednesday to change our meetings uh, effective 2022 to having them both on the same night. Still, still twice a month, but we would not meet on Thursday. Um, we would start at 530. Um, and in my own personal opinion, it would actually allow us a little bit more leeway to sort of be with our constituents or able to respond to them better. Or, you know, I was able to go to an event last Thursday because we didn't have that meeting. So um we hope that it will be good for the public to still have access to us um if you're multitasking you can be driving from work to our physical in-person meeting and still listen to the call mm -hmm. and then come into the meeting so it may be long but we're going to give it a try 
I think that's the major. Um, I'm assuming Sue maybe shared budget approval or mm -hmm. we're not going to take over your meeting. Okay. That's the most important thing. We're changing our meeting schedule, you know, so everybody knows and you can help us share it out as well. So Commissioner Sanders, you will have Wednesday meetings? The first and third of the month, so it will stay the same, but we will no longer, so we'll have Ways and Means and our board meeting. Same night, Wednesdays. Okay. Just no Thursday meetings. Wow. All right. Well, we'll start a pool on how long we think those meetings are going to run then. <laughs> you know, I, I apologize. I totally forgot about that. that we've, we've had so many things go through this year. This is the, the meeting time is important, but I think the, the important business starts at, at seven. And so um, it's that will you know, the, before that will be a working session and then the important business will start at seven. So that's probably the most important thing to know. Commissioner Fuller, we need your blessings and prayers and meditation <laughs> on this. <laughs> Positive thoughts. <laughs> Caroline. <laughs> we all agreed we could change it back if it is right. really not working out. Okay. Commissioner Rod Green has a question. Yes. Uh, so does... Uh, does that mean that, uh, that uh, the Ways and Means Committee will meet at 5.30 p.m.? Is that correct? It What's will be a, a working, working session. So okay. we anticipate changing that up a little. We'll still be talking to different departments, but also spending more time on the budget in working session. But we're moving from a Ways and Means and uh, BOC to a first and second reading. Okay. So public comment is still welcome. Uh -huh. Nothing has changed in that matter. Great. Thank you. Thank Sounds you. Sounds like a good idea. Thank you. See, it could spread. This could be like <laughs> a, a theme. <laughs> For those updates, both of you appreciate it. Thank you. All right. I don't see any other hands raised. I don't want to cut anyone off. I, Commissioner Sanders and Shink, anything further? No? Okay. All right. With that in mind, I believe Doug, Commissioner Doug Fuller had moved to adjourn, and I interrupted him before I could accept a second. Is there a second to that motion? I second. second. Thank you. Aaron, if you're still there, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Joanne McCollum? Yes. Commissioner Rod Green? Yes. Commissioner Doug Fuller? Aye. And Commissioner Barb Fuller? Yes. Thank you, everybody. We are adjourned. Uh, see you on the 21st. <laughs>